don't need bigger knife. Yeah. Greetings, everybody. We have returned once again on this wonderful evening to help entertain the masses. Um, hopefully, uh, you can tear yourself away from the TV, and thanks to those that have been able to do so and rip yourself away from that all-important game of those fluffy, fluffy, cute puppy ball contestants. My God, they're adorable. She breaks free, cuts left. She's at the 40, the 10. Muffin takes it 99 yards to the house. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the important game on today, right? Yeah. <laughs> Un unnecessary fluffness on the field. Yeah, yeah. The only yep. fluffiness I'm aware of today are these superb owls you can find hanging around barns this time of night. But uh, aside from that, I can't think of anything else important going on. Joe what just went, Joe just went hard right there with that one. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard about them, the superb owls. Superb. <laughs> So today, I was carrying around my nice bailout and wanted to show it off because it's getting some really nice wear showing up on it, which was exasperated a little bit by taking a trip through the washing and drying cycles. You just wanted a, a small tumbled finish, right? Like it's, yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's what I said. It's like, oh, I love that machine tumbled finish you got there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask in the moment, but when you found it in the dryer, was it open or closed? It was closed. It was okay. still clipped into the pocket, but or clipped onto the pocket, but it had come out and like twisted the edge of the pocket inside out. Okay, okay. So it was still hanging on, but it was flipped out of the pocket. Good thing you didn't open up and see a bunch of puncture holes all the way around the inside of your washing well, machine. There um, are a few little things in throughout it, just from the glass punch, but I nothing actually, crazy. I, I forgot about that, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> um, I'm carrying a Trask. Look at this guy go. Yeah. Look at this guy. I was excited for this thing to come out, and now it's out, and now I have it. It's a deadbolt. It's in D2. I have it, and I really like it. <laughs> I, I don't even I don't even hate the plastic he handles. Fight me. Tell us what you've learned about the deadbolt, Joe. Oh, boy. Okay, so... To... <laughs> <laughs> this'll, this'll be quick, but... Three hours later. Let's say you want to adjust... <laughs> Three hours later. <laughs> no, quick for me, so two and a half hours. Come on, give me some credit. Uh, if you want to adjust the centering or rather the pivot tightness on this thing. That is not the pivot screw. That is the screw that actuates the deadbolt. To actuate the pivot screw, you have to take the entire backside of this knife off, then you can take out the pivot, then you can remove the deadbolt, and under the backside of the deadbolt is a cross-cut uh, tube that you can twist with a flat screwdriver. And then that will adjust your action. But at least you don't have to disassemble it completely. And at that point, you can still Only test. three quarters. Yeah, you, it's just weird that you have to take <laughs> off an entire scale in order for that to really work. Not uh, Next pocket dump! Yeah. What were you carrying, Paul? <laughs> there was a little sneak preview of this guy uh, just a second ago, but uh, yeah. I am carrying the Spredico Chaparral in uh, a Rafael Noble scale. Um, it's all mm -hmm. shiny and stuff. Yeah, it was a recent acquisition, along with uh, some new lube. New lube. So there. I'll let my brother-in-law know we missed out. <laughs> on, on the lube? No, on the chaparral. Did you, did you not hear that story? No. Oh, it's funny. Oh, that'll be a story for another time. I'll tell you all about it. Jared oh. knows about it, so it's already funny to him, even though he's not in the chat yet. But uh, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, brother-in-law, <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. Um, finally, last but not least, uh, I'm carrying what a per Persian blade should be. Mm. Oh, it is impossible <laughs> to get this not schmutzy. I just wiped it before we aired it. It's already schmutzy. Look at how it's Sucker. <laughs> a little shiny. So shiny. I was talking about shine. Let's uh, let's talk about Persian blades, shall we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Quick shout out to Ben, Justin, and Zinks in chat. What's going on? Um, and I got DM'd you know, by Mr. Fisk. 
asking me if we're live. And <coughs> did somebody like DM him? Like from chat. <laughs> I'd really appreciate it. I, I don't I think, think that's going to happen. Right <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun. So before we jump into it, I'm going to make sure that every one of you all out there likes and subscribes, or else you will be cursed that the prongs of your electrical plugins, one will always be bent <clears throat> at a really awkward angle that it won't fit nicely into the plug and it'll be like weird to try and get it straight to fit it in because of the awkward angle it's been at and it'll just be a pain in the ass. Like and subscribe. <laughs> okay, I, I've got to say, over the last two or three weeks, Nigel's been coming <laughs> up with some really, really good. But the problem is, it's like, it's always, I always have one step ahead of your curse. <sighs> And in my particular case here, it's that there's no outlets in my house to plug shit into. The <laughs> so, like, I'm not even kidding. There's one outlet in this entire room to run this computer and everything else. So, oh, that's good. We've got power cords everywhere. <laughs> What's going on, John and Mississauga? Evening. Oh, and I'm back. <laughs> Should put some vodka in that pineapple soda. No, <laughs> none. <laughs> and yes, Justin, you can replace them. It's still the pain in the ass and an inconvenience, though. So curse is still valid. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell our audience to suck it. That's weird. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> I mean, just don't, because it's weird. <laughs> Speaking of weird, so, yeah. how about we get on with this? Yes, yes. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. we are going to be jumping into the CRKT ritual. It was their new, crazy, shiny flagship show-off night for the year. It is showing off, that's for sure. <laughs> it's a it's a big one. It is out. It is <laughs> out for the world to see. Yes. <laughs> Do we want to start on a high note? I don't know who has a high note. <laughs> all I know is I'm going to hashtag this all week. Hashtag not a dick pack. I actually uh, I compiled our scores ahead of time into the spreadsheet, so I know that I'm the high note this week. Uh, not by Fair much. Enough. Not by much, but. Uh, yep. All right. Well, with that, I'll I'll get into it. I suppose. Oh, I see. Joe's just leading the show. I yeah. see what's going on. <laughs> May as well. It's already seven thirty-five. <laughs> keep, keep, keep it keep it rolling. Um, I may. I don't think I was overly kind to this knife. I gave it a C, a seventy. Um, sevens and eights for objective side. Uh, the high points for me were the fit and finish. This thing is really nicely put together it's nicely polished on places like the backspacer the bolster the micarta handle okay they're, they're not calling it micarta it's micarta um it's been cut pretty nicely uh contouring's all nice the grinds look good uh the other high point was for me lock up and actuation i wasn't 100 percent sold on the idea of a assisted ikbs uh, system from crkt but uh, the thing fires pretty reliably with a, a pretty heavy ka-chunk when it's open in your hand. It's it's silly. Uh, sevens for everything else because I found it to be pretty, uh, honestly, pretty me mediocre. Um, 12 seed Sandvik blade. You, you do get a pretty big blade. Uh, yeah, just again, kind of middle of the road. Um, it did get some higher scores in my, my personal side of things. Uh, for aesthetics, I gave it an 8. This thing is like ridiculous. I'll bring the picture back up here just because it's it's so goofy that it's actually kind of cool, and I hate it. I hate that I kind of like the way this thing looks, but it's not a. You should hate that. Yeah, it's not a practical carry <laughs> choice though. So I mean that that's why I gave it things like a uh, a five for an enthusiasm. Uh, ergonomic preference. I hate trailing point blades for EDC to begin with. Uh, this is just the extreme end of that. It's like uh. And well, this has uh, this has a trailing point behind the other point. Yeah, see. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it curves back like ridiculously. Uh, so for me, that you think it's going to trail, and then it just trails some more. It does it twice. It's, yeah, just keep going. Again, talk about what 
Persian blade should be. I don't mind a swept blade like that, but it's got it, anything more than this. It's just overly silly for me. I like Dennis's more though. This one's a little silly. Um, you yeah. should you should <laughs> like mine more. <laughs> pocket ergos though, uh, easy in and out of the pocket. Uh, it was okay. It was decent. Uh, it was smooth, and it, for how long the knife was, it didn't really get in the way all that badly. So, yeah, seventy. It's a C. Mm-hmm. Are, are we going down the road of like from high note to low note? We, 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 we I, it's, can do it's that. hard to say how we're going to play this one. Yeah, let's <laughs> just uh, let's random it up there, Paul. Oh well, I, if I'm randoming it up, then I'm. It should be you or me. All right, I'll go next. Yeah. We're going to take a dive. We're going to take a dive through Hate Town. (laughs) Are we? Are we? Well, okay, first of all, I scored this thing on cost of materials. I scored it a nine. Um, It's got sandbag steel. It's got resin-infused plastic micarta-ish style handles. Uh, Blue painted. I don't know if it's anodized or... It's it's a stainless steel bolster and backspacer. So anyway, I think but, it's some anodizing. It's anodized, um, yeah. So fit and finish. Um, there's a couple things that took a hit. I took some pictures just to be able to show off, um, as well as the fit and finish. And I don't know if everyone's going to dabble on it, but the harsh corners this knife has um, on the edges of those white plastic resin infused micarta ish style handles. Um, there there was a burn mark. On uh, the one. Okay. I'll let me bring mm-hmm. up let me bring up a picture for that here. But then on top of that, they weren't chamfered. Like there was actually harsh edges on that white, those white corners of the micarta. And it wasn't the stainless steel liner on the inside. It was the outside of the micarta. The outside handle had crisp like I could fire starter off of that some bitch. And it's a micarta. <laughs> I have to say And you can see uh, you can kind of zoom in where the brown is on the bat on that yeah, one spot. You can definitely yeah. see that. There's it's a burn there. mark. Yeah. Where they're, they were polishing it. They're there, but I will say in hand, I didn't even notice in a variety of grips. Okay. Um, in hand, not so much, but run your hand across it the next time you, you get to handle this thing, which is all within a day or two for you guys, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's crisp. And at first, I actually thought it was the inside liner, and I played with it, and it's actually the outside white micarta that has this. Yeah. Fair enough. Really crisp edge to it. Uh, the other thing that kind of with me, uh, the other picture that I sent you in that same file is on the inside of the handle. Uh, and it's yes. really, really close up. But uh, why I ask if it was an anodized or coated or painted or whatever, is there's a drip on the inside of the backspacer um, hmm. on this guy. It, it might be a type of bluing. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. And there she is right there. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so I don't know what it is that they put on this thing to make it blue. Yeah. I'm just going to. And... Tristan... Oh, go ahead, Joe. I was just saying, I'm going to take a quick trip to their website here to see if I can find any more information. Mm. It doesn't say anything. <laughs> it says blue... it says stainless steel. I've already looked it up. It just says stainless steel. It doesn't even mention the fact that they're blue. So, again, I, it's something I'm curious about. Or if, if that's part of the steel where it was a flaw in the steel and it just got You get a look really close. It's actually a little plastic saran wrap thing you peel off. Oh. Like off the front of your fridge. Paul. It's, it's like on the, on the titanium delicas where they're protecting the, the titanium. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, then thirdly, because I'm on the hate train. Oh, Joe. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, do, do they bother going to the Spiderco factory and rummaging through their trash bins in order to find the blue plastic? Or do you think they ask nicely for donations? Not not sure on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I, I don't think Eric, Eric and like Sal charge for pocket clips. They're not giving free other hand notes to anyone, dude. <laughs> like it's <laughs> That's probably true. Okay. Third is the bolster. If you take uh, the picture of the two bolsters that I said, um, there's scratches underneath the blue finish on one of the sides. And one of them is actually pretty good. But the other side, there's actually scratches right up at the very top. I think that's the good side, but I caught the reflection. I yeah. think it's, it's the other side. Yeah, it just takes a delay. But yeah, there is a couple okay. scratches you can see at the top there. And then the smaller uh, torque screw 
on the one side that also has the scratches on it um, is, is a little bit stripped. So not the big pivot screw, but the other screw that's in the blue bolster. Oh. If you look at one side and the other, one's actually stripped, the other one's clean. Hmm. And this is straight out of the box. No one's touched anything. Hmm. That that's one there. And that, if you look yeah. at the other side, it is very crisp yeah. com in comparison. Mm. Going back and forth, that is that is the case. So I almost <laughs> gave this thing a six. Okay. For a finish, <laughs> but this is CRKT we're talking about. It's like me yeah. scoring a bench made and scoring it harsh because of the all centered blades. I'm probably not going to because it's bench made. I'm probably going <laughs> to let CRKT get away with it and I'm going to give them a seven instead of a six because I've seen worse things on CRKT. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, that's me ranting about fit and finish, but there was a bunch of things that I saw. Fair enough. Ergo's, it fit me actually pretty good other than the harsh corners. And like Joe mentioned, he didn't feel it in hand as I don't know if the rest of you guys did either. Um, the actual er Ergo's felt nice. It was just, yeah. Anyway, personal side, I'll skip over material choice. This thing was 1227 Sandvik. When I first saw it, I actually thought it was just an HCR. Or they've been throwing four one one six in weird knives like this type of thing lately. So I thought. So when I saw twelve twenty seven, kind of yeah, yeah. Um, aesthetics, ew, ew. That's not the way a Persian should be. Uh, if you're gonna have a Persian look that big, it might as well be like sixteen inches or bigger type of thing. That's what she said. <laughs> Backside of this knife. Um, <laughs> she needs to go to the doctor. Uh, pocket ergos. It's. It's a three because it's a right hand only, but I don't think I would have given it that much more than that anyway. It sits really, really fat in the pocket because of the weird, and it's not a deep carry in the slightest. So you've got this little game mm -hmm. called just the tip, just for a second, just to see how it feels. <laughs> yeah, hanging out of your hanging out of your pocket the whole time. Um, my personal ergo profit was actually a nine. This thing fit me really, really nicely as far as not looking at it and just holding it goes. Uh, and then the enthusiasm, honestly, I wanted to give this thing a one. Um, <laughs> I gave it a three uh, because this actually gives me hopes for CRKT to come with the white micarta, the 1227. Uh, I'm actually impressed with the IKBS slash uh, speed safe-ish style opening, <laughs> whatever that may be. Um, they so, yeah, yeah, it's... This one's not my cup of tea, but, and at the price point of what you're offering, IKBS and speed of safe with my card, blah, 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 type of thing. 125 is not nearly as bad as what they were charging three years ago for uh, jump bones, which is more expensive mm -hmm. and less flashy in my opinion. Right. So yeah. yeah, bam, there's my review. Yeah. Fair enough. Word. So what you're saying is I wasn't hatery enough. <laughs> nope. I, don't know. I, don't know. I still. Think... I took pictures. You saw me sneak into the back room and take a bunch of pictures because I was like, "Wait, I saw something. Wait, I saw something else. Wait, yeah." yeah. I uh, I had an hour to review this knife, so I combed it hard <laughs> for that. Uh, that's what oh, she yeah. said. Yeah. I, I, bet you, I, bet you, I bet you did. I bet you did. Maybe that's why there were scratches. You know, I don't, I don't like any of that sentence. So are we going to keep on the road to hate town or is Paul going to redeem us for a little bit here? No, nah, let's, let's have Paul bring us back up the rear end. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh. I'm sorry. We all know what this knife looks like. We do. <laughs> and uh, quite appropriately, I gave it a 69. Yeah, you uh, did. <laughs> which is mm -hmm. We should have ended with yours. <laughs> Although, no. who ends who ends with that? Oh my! <laughs> oh, anyways, oh. um, Jesus Christ, man, you killed me. <laughs> <laughs> Cost versus materials and fit and finish. I gave it an eight. I didn't notice those things that Dennis saw right away. Apparently, um, I did notice some scratching. Um, on one of the variants that I looked at, kind of the, the scratching that Dennis mentioned already. Um, as far Whose as phone the, was that, by the way, that was mine. <laughs> did it make noise? It sure Big did. Time. <laughs> if you want to put that on silent, <laughs> that's on silent. Good, good stuff. Now, anyways, um, 
cutting ability, I gave it an eight. That thing, again, since we're talking about Persian blades, um, it comes up. God damn it, man! Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> comes up a lot in the tip, and that actually, as far as like a scraper blade kind of thing, it didn't make the worst knife in that kind of context because it comes up so much, almost like the Rizel. You can actually like push cut through paper with the tip, which was kind of surprising. Um, lock up and actuation. The thing that I really enjoyed about the knife was the fact that um, closing the knife didn't feel like closing a lot of other um, assisted knives. It seemed a lot easier, a lot softer on the close. It wasn't fighting you as much. And because of that, I expected the action to be really slow on the open. Um, and because of the fact that they put the IKBS system on it, it uh, definitely made things work out in the end. I think that's why it's so easy to close too, is because the ball bearings are rolling it into the handle too. So it feels like a really soft the compared nice. to a Kershaw blur or my barrage or something that does it's, is just coiled spring until it's closed. It's, it's just kind of funny that it's like a drop shut for half the travel <laughs> and then it just kind of bounces once it hits the spring. It's, yeah. it's weird. It's weird. Um, for material choice on the personal side of things, I gave it a six. Um, I do like 12 C 27 Sandvik. Um, I do like my Carta. I don't necessarily like it in that context of the thing that they made. Um, and that brings me to aesthetic, which I gave a four cause it's a little penisy. That's a penis. Um, <laughs> more penisy than it needs to be. Um, <laughs> Like there's there's a joke and then there, it's being on the nose. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So <laughs> just just a random side story. Oh um, dear! Any oh of, dear! <laughs> <laughs> any of you know some of uh, the more recent Kevin Smith weird films that he did, like uh, Yoga Hosers or Tusk? I heard of Tusk. I know, hadn't, hadn't, hadn't actually seen, seen any of it. Okay, well, uh, Johnny Depp is in them playing a French Canadian detective. Oh yes, of course. And he's got this big prosthetic nose that looks kind of penis-like. And the first time he was getting it put on in makeup and stuff, he insisted that the makeup artist like draw a little vein on it as well, and even and like make it look like distinctly more. And he like ran up to Kevin Smith. He's like, "Do you see it? Do you see it? Isn't it awesome?" <laughs> that's that's pretty awesome. So, Speaking of on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, that's, that's quite the come around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it still came around though, so it worked out. I don't like any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. As far as pocketer goes, I gave it a seven. Um, because yeah, it is a little bit fat. It's kind of the same thing that my bedlam falls into where it doesn't get carried very often. Um, because of how much pocket real estate it takes up. And it, it, can you switch over to the other picture that I took uh, with the CRKT boxes there, Joe, that actually shows the pocket clip as well while we're talking about it? It has a failing with the pocket clip too, if I'm being honest, which a lot of these larger knives do when they try and make them deep carry because they want to have a big clip on it. That and inherently that makes it a really soft pull, which is good for getting it out of the pocket but it makes it a real hazard of getting ripped right off the knife. Like I worry about ripping the clip off my bedlam constantly. Fair. I just got to edit this thing to rotate because it doesn't want to show up normally. Um, <laughs> ergonomic preference, I gave it an eight because it fit my hand surprisingly well. Um, I really wanted to make a joke at that and I'm not going to. <laughs> That's the size you're used to. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> it's a one, that's all I've said. Um, ergonomic preference. Classy. I already so said classy. that. Um, and then enthusiasm was a five because I wanted to like this thing. I wanted to. I wanted it to be a fun CRKT bedlam or something like that. And what it turned into being was a folding um, Sinbad scimitar from uh, um, Condor, which mm -hmm. as... A machete is amazing. It's hilarious, and I love it. But as a pocket knife, it's a little much. 
Yeah. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah. You all wrapped up then? Yep. That's all me. Cool. <clears throat> Are we ready, folks? Was your aesthetics uh, <laughs> asterisk <laughs> just? Uh... Uh, that was. It was a little bit penis. I wanted. Yeah, to okay. Okay. We well, just just double checking. I, I didn't. Thought, think you needed a reminder for that topic, but you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> kind of staring you in the face the entire time. But you know, it's... Um, I don't know <laughs> what level you like to stare at, but it doesn't stare me in the face. That's for sure. It's not about like <laughs> it, Dennis. It's not about liking it. Too much further into that weirdness. <laughs> Look at the hate train. Jesus, yep. Nigel. Yeah, okay. Oh, the hate train has rolled in. Uh-huh. I love the fact mm-hmm. that none, mm-hmm. none of you bastards dropped uh, six or seven on fit and finish. Yeah, also yeah. want to jump in and say hey to Mr. Fisk and be fair and chat. Good day, boys. Hey, guys. Lockable board. The hate train. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I gave this a very, very hard F. It got a 42. Yeah, hard F. It needed 13 points to be a D. Yeah. Does the answer do everything in the universe? No, it is most definitely not the the answer to everything, despite that score. Yeah, yeah, no. (laughs) So, jumping in, um, objectively, it did so so. Uh, Materials versus cost uh, gave it a six because. For 12C28N <clears throat> is mostly what I was thinking of there and thinking about some of the more offerings that you can get, get that sort of steal in and the price comparison to that. So that was the main reason it got a little lower on the materials. Uh, fit and finish, same as Paul. I guess I just didn't look close enough to notice the same sort of discrepancies that Dennis did there as well. Uh, things that I really did enjoy about the fit and finish was how uh, rounded all the edges of the bolsters were at least if not the the white parts of the handle Mm -hmm. Uh, cutting ability i gave it a five because there's portions of the blade that cut nicely but trying to be able to use the whole blade in in any one sense it's you you can use this portion and you can adjust and use this portion so it wasn't it wasn't like the the whole blade could cut well it was specific portions and specific ways could. <laughs> right. Excuse me, I'm going to adjust. I need to use a different portion. <laughs> what was that? I said, excuse me, I, excuse me, I need to adjust. I'm going to use a different portion. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I really don't like that. The lockup, or no, the uh, ergonomic execution gave it a six because with how many contours in the finger toil area it was, I found that was just awkward in my mind, despite hand size. So that's why I gave it a little low for that. And the lockup and actuation, I gave it kind of lower for, I think actually the same reason why Paul gave it a little bit higher is that softness when it's closing. Um, for me, that results in a little gumminess when you're going to open it. I find that, like with the uh, Kershaw speed safe stuff, there's a nice positive point where you know it's going to go. Whereas with this one, at least, it's got a a little bit of a swing before it catches and goes. I find how much of that has to do with the size of the blade, though, and just the it style be, of the yeah. blade. It's just the the whole thing. It has to, yeah. It's not like a blur yeah, yeah. coming out, or uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. part of that feeling could just be the fact that this thing is a pirate sword in the pocket, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> Most yeah. definitely. Yep. Then jumping into the real hate pile, mm. my personal side of stuff. <laughs> I don't like the word hate pile. <laughs> I, I want to actually go back to cutting ability for a second there as well. You gave it a five, which is an interesting yep. topic about um, the actual blade grind itself is not a terrible grind. Thickness behind the edge, whatever type of thing. But because of <laughs> the shape of it is where you gave it the big hit, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I was considering the actual usage of it cutting, not just yeah, yeah. how the blade. Yeah, It just brings up a... a 
a good topic is rather than like blade geometry and whatever type of thing as far as just like mm -hmm. just a push cut to see the grind on it compared to actually using the edge is a topic that's worth you know yeah. Into. Yeah. yeah so yeah i uh I, I made a comment and i forget to who um but it's like can you imagine trying to open a box with this knife like can you imagine trying to do any kind of real work <laughs> okay You'd okay, have this to, is the like, this is the best part is if you bring up CRKT's website and actually look at the ritual, the very last sentence in its description is it's perfect for doing battle in ancient Persia and for making quick work of a package on your doorstep. Mm. Uh -huh. So if you don't um, care what's inside, sure. And when I read <laughs> when I read that, the only thing I could think of was flipping it upside down and actually using the tip of it in mm. a reverse grip to actually like pruning yeah. knife. Or like yeah. this this is just being an approximation, but almost like holding the box like you it's almost like you're trying to stab into it, but the knife edge is like here. It it's weird. I I don't know. Yeah. I, I gotta be honest. When I bought this knife, that's what my first thought was, oh, I'll just use the back of the knife and rip open boxes. It doesn't work nearly as nice as just a nice sharp knife. Like, it, <laughs> yeah. sure, you can do it. You can open a box with your keys if you have to, but it's not a fulfilling... I know you, you, know. <laughs> I know you said keys, but I heard cheese, and we should go back to Nigel's personal side of things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. I see. I see. <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah. So the only nice score I gave it was the material choice. Yeah, your high point is a yes, six. I, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. 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 Uh, put that on paper, and I like all those, like the steel, the bolster, and the handle material. Yeah, those are all decent materials for sure, but nothing outstanding or wowing. And then from then there on out, it's just heat after heat after heat after heat with this thing. For the aesthetics, it is god awful and ugly and gross and horrible. The only reason why I gave it a one is because I do like the combination of those blue bolsters and the white polished out micarta material that they did. Right. That's why I gave it gave it a one. <laughs> it's just that color combo would look nice. Mm -hmm. uh, for ergonomic preference, like Dennis, usually when things are a uh, right hand only, I'll give it a five. But because of how chunky, weird, full in the pocket it was, I did dip down to a three for that. And it ergonomic almost sits like canted. It doesn't sit straight up and down. Yeah. Let me yeah. Actually, let me, yeah, let me actually odd. let me bring up that picture again because. You can see where, yeah, you can see the fold of the clip. So it does sit pretty deeply, but it it brings the whole knife like back into the seam, and it, which then pushes the clip forward. It's it's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very very weird indeed. Then for the ergonomic preference, I gave it a one because I hate pistol grips. I hate overly insanely exaggerated pistol grips. The only reason I gave it a one is because my hand actually fit in it. <laughs> 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 and then my enthusiasm, if you couldn't guess, there is nothing I really like about this knife. There is no way in hell I would ever own it. If it was gifted to me, I would probably turn around and see how quickly I could give it out to someone else. <laughs> Like, I don't think I would even keep it just for the novelty showpiece sake of it if it was gifted to me sort of thing. And given that that's all, their almost entire marketing scheme for this knife, that's that's pretty scathing review. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it can't be for everybody, right? No. And it's certainly not, <laughs> not for, for me. <laughs> oh, no. I, I wouldn't say it's for me either. If it is for you. Like, it's it's a well-built knife. It will function as a knife. 12C Sandvik mm -hmm. makes a really nice edge and cuts very nicely. Yep. I, I think the big kind of one for me that stands out is like the arguing point on Nigel score more than anything else is actually cost versus materials. Um, 
You think so? Uh, and it's not even the blade steel itself. It's everything else involved. The fact that they are using ball bearing, IKBS, some sort of stainless steel bolster with the backspacer that they did some sort of anodizing and or painting mm-hmm. on. So some extra steps, white-ish micarta resin infused plastic like materials. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and even the rounding. Yeah, was, yeah. I was on the fence of giving it a seven, but yeah, I did drop down to the six for it. Yeah, so that one for me is is the one that kind of stands out as being like um, other CRKTs in that 100 plus category and how well, little are involved with some of those constructions. Right? What so, the folding um, Clever Girl go for? I'm pretty sure that... 50, uh, 150 American, I think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like I said earlier, it's roughly two. Expensive. Two two Canadian, yeah. Okay, okay. That that was on point. Okay. Yeah. So, no. if you like that kind of knife, I mean, this so, is a cheaper option, definitely. Keep, keep in mind, like Nigel was talking about, twelve C Sandvik being available and Mora offerings. Uh, keep in mind, twelve C is a very cheap steel, and if you were hoping to hold an edge with twelve C, it's not. Not that this is the knife you should be counting on holding an edge if you're going through a bunch of cardboard <laughs> or something like that, but 12C Well, it'll doesn't... hold an edge in places, right? Of course. So, yeah. <laughs> and it strops back super easy, sure, but, I mean, even 8CR will outperform it in terms of edge holding, so... That knife would be so annoying to strop. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to do it in stages. <laughs> Uh, and it's kind of funny that in CRKT's like actual posting of this knife, it doesn't say it says resin infused fiber handle yeah, in don't. the actual description, but then in the side specs, it actually just says ivory micarta. <laughs> does it really? You bet it does. That's yeah, I'm looking at it right funny. now. If you want to bring it up, I was also reading the sentence about the opening packages at your doorstop, which I was like, yeah, because this is the <laughs> knife that you're going to do that with. Yeah. Well, yeah, while making menacing eye contact with the with the mailman, right? Mm-hmm. It, you mm-hmm. were going to get a kitten for Christmas, but then... <laughs> like, no! <laughs> no, Den is too dark. Too dark. Like I said, it's fine to open the package as long as you don't care about what's inside. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yeah. And you're right, Ivory Micarta. And yeah, it's weird. Two, it says. two CR-13 stainless steel. Wow. For the, for the bolsters. Yeah. Mm. I mean... It's just, yeah. It's not and that- it'll be interesting to see how those wear uh, a year down the road or two years down the road mm-hmm. because of the the vagaries about what that handle actually is made of or like coated with, right? So, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. It's not the exact same color, but it kind of reminds me the look of uh, the pocket clips from. Uh, oh, Rook. Oh, Rook. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. That just it dropped in my brain there. My brain has been fucking useless today. Um, that is today. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you tell brains or Paul's brain power is lacking, and apparently mine seems to be as well. Uh, and our timing tonight is weird due to our little bit of a late start with technical difficulties. Not seems like it should time. be a good place to get. Yeah, yeah, but Sorry. seems like it should be a good place to get on break. Yes, uh, we got a write down a score and throw it up because if we're oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. into three episodes then that okay. would just not That's make right. sense for the second episode <laughs> we, we can do that now um, where's my trick so this, we, we okay. could do that now yeah. let, let me <laughs> let me tell you this thing broke all kinds of records here i'm just gonna pop up our good old-fashioned scoreboard here so this is all the knives we've reviewed okay and nigel don't worry. don't worry nigel's got some hate train oh yeah that mm-hmm. yeah so, uh, yeah, it, it's not even in the top 20. It is quite literally Come the on. third last place. Get There's to it. it. <laughs> so, amazing. Yeah. So overall score was a 60.75. Oofed. <laughs> yeah. Now, Nigel had a heavy hand in that, obviously. Uh, um, hey, but- okay. Oh. Nigel scored the seismic 20 points higher for the record. Yeah, yeah, he did. I'm just saying, something's hinky. Something's hinky in in the Nigel scoring universe. <laughs> it's, there's no that way that. Hinky, though. 
Well, the seismic is not a nice knife, but it's not twenty points lower than this knife is. Well, okay, if we if um, we hire, sorry. hold on, it's, hire. it's usable. It's not gross looking. It's ambidextrous. It's actually functional. So yeah, it is twenty points higher. <laughs> yeah, functional because that that finger choil doesn't just fucking bite in like nobody's business. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's a different knife for a different conversation. Regardless, if you were curious as to what if we took out the outlier, if uh, if we just took our three scores and got an average, it would be a uh, sixty-seven points even, which is the same as. The subvert, the bailout with the 3B, the slacker, or no, just above the slacker. So it's not like it improves that much. Like, don't think that Nigel's dragging the score down that low. This is truly just an awful knife. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> in terms of a work. I don't, I don't believe it is. I believe, yeah, for, it's like saying I that. Gave, I, gave a, a I gave it a funky... 70. So keep in yeah, mind, yeah. I don't hate yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, you scored it eight points higher than I did, right? Yeah, like, it's, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think, like, as far as an art piece goes... That's what they were aiming for. That's... It, it, you know what? Like, I don't know why it's people like are going to watch... It's like saying a Lightfoot Predator isn't a functional well, knife getting a five as well. Like, it's it's in that... And I know there's levels of art knives, but it, it, it's like you saying... Can, it, you, yeah. can have a, you can have a beautiful knife that is perfectly functional, and this isn't that. So, it's... It is what it is. It's, it's for when you're hanging out with other knife guys, and it they're, they ask you what you have in your pocket. You can be like, I got one of these. Oh, very nice. Look at that. It's, just, it's, it's, it's for showing off to your buddies as much as anything else that it exists for. <laughs> I think that about wraps that up. Uh, hmm. Nigel's got it up on the scoreboard there. Uh, yep, yep. It's uh, bottoming out on everything there, hey? That it is, yeah. Fantastic. We're gonna need a lower bottom on that thing. <laughs> yeah. Proportional yeah. Re representation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're ready to go on break now? <laughs> I think, I think <laughs> we've got all the bases covered now. I think so. <laughs> we can actually do a second episode properly when we come back. It'll be great. It'll be great. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, head on off on break as we shall be as well. Uh, hang out in the chat. We shall be back soon. Make sure to go off and empty out your bladders, refill your drinks, and we shall return shortly with everyone. See you soon.